All right, friends, as you can see, I got my Sidewinder back. If you don't know why I'm shooting this video, you need to get into my menu thing there in my prior videos and watch those videos. And it's going to help you out a lot. But uh, this is the Western Sidewinder that was broke. Now, this is your lower block assembly, lower breech block assemblies right here. Uh, that's your chamber and that's your barrel. Your chamber and your barrel disconnect off of this block, but the rest of the block travels all the way up here to the trigger. The trigger's got a little arm that comes back here. Your valve, your air valve is right here. You know, this is a triggerless, or this is a hammerless, uh, system. So, that, and that's what makes it beautiful. Uh, what did I measure this out at? Is this nine pounds? This is loaded, fully loaded, nine pounds, okay? Uh, my ARs, fully loaded, are eight pounds. My Hatsan Blitz, fully loaded, is 11 pounds. I want to say 12. Too fucking much, 12. So nine to 12, you're like, oh, three pounds, I can do that. No, you fucking hustle that motherfucker around a little bit. So that's one of the beautiful things about the Western Sidewinder, especially when you buy the short barrel. You can buy the long barrel. It's not going to add that much weight. It's going to actually going to shift the weight forward a little bit more. Now, the thing I have found, my hot on Blitz, I can put it in my tripod. I got one of them squeezy tripods. You know, you clamps it in there. And one of the big, tall son of a bitches. Uh, that works pretty good. This, not so much. You got to have the, the, um, the bottom, the lower pick rail. You've got to mount that onto your tripod and, and have it mounted like that. But remember, when you do that, it's going to want to fall backwards and point straight the fuck up. So, I don't know. I haven't figured out a tripod situation for this yet. But uh, I will tell you the first thing I did when I got this back. Now, let me, let me pause for just a second. Um, I had to call and check on this after a few weeks. And Jared at Precision Air Guns told me, you know, his tech was on vacation that week and he'd get to it next week. Okay, no problem. But I had to initiate all communications. Understand that. So, I mean, I shipped the fucking thing off and I, I got my tracking number. I see it shows up, you know. If you expect to get a call from them, don't, you, you, you're barking up the wrong tree, man. You're not going to get a call from them. You have to initiate communication with these people. Now, uh, I was okay waiting the extra week. You understand, though, understand that I bought this rifle. I bought this gun six months ago. I've been able to use it three out of the six months. Now, Jared assured me that he would make sure that this, you know, since, I, since you're going through me, it, you know, I'll make sure that you got a full year warranty on that. I don't have shit in writing, so I can't honor his word uh, unless, you know, he communicates to me directly. Uh, but I don't foresee any problems with it. Um, but you never know. The, the, the air valve might, might fail. Who knows? But uh, they ship the thing back to me. Now, they use a separate insurance. They don't use UPS insurance. I can totally understand that. But there was no communication. So, 1 o'clock in the morning, my wife works night shift as a neonatal intensive care nurse, saving babies all night, and some guy comes banging on the door and then ringing the doorbell because he's got a package that somebody needs to sign for. He's got a job to do, too. But fuck me to tears. Uh, give me a heads up that somebody's going to be coming banging on my door uh, with this gun. I didn't even know it had been shipped. So I called him that day. I was like, hey, somebody's banging on my door. Uh, what the fuck's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, we shipped that gun out the other day. Um, here's the tracking number. Motherfucker, why didn't you send me the tracking number when you shipped the fucking gun? So, no, communication, serious downfall. Customer experience, poor, poor at best. Um, the performance of the gun. So let's get back to it. Uh, it was broke. Watch the video, damn it. It was broke down here at the adjustment valve. The, the, the block. So it's like they, they turned it too fast or the hole was too small when they started tapping the threads or something. And it broke. And then they parkerized it. 
And I it's got people saying that's a that's a not a parkerized finish, that's an anodized finish. It should be aluminum. No, this this finish is parkerized. You can see the smooth lines and the finish on it. If you know if you know that your your anodized finish is like you take a magic marker and run it across the aluminum. It it doesn't have a thick coating on it. Anodized finish is, is more of like a, a discoloration of the aluminum. Anyway. Um, I sent it off and I get it back and you know damn good and well first thing I did was start taking some bitch apart um, this is my original knob probably the original valve and then right back in here where this thing goes up there's a screw that goes in here and somebody had put a gouge in the anodize in the uh, parkerization now you got me saying anodization in the parkerization finish, in the parkerized finish, somebody put a big old gouge in the frame right in here. What the fuck is that all about? But, I mean, I'm not tripping on it. It's not a big deal. It's cosmetic, and you can't see it because it's under the it's under the, the grip. Not That's not a big deal. I'm not going to bitch about that. I'm mainly going to bitch about the communication, the piss-poor communication, and the fact that I've had this gun, I've owned this gun six months, and I've been able to use it for three and I don't have anything in writing from Jared at uh, Precision Air Guns saying, yes, I'm going to give you a full year warranty on this brand new breech block assembly. Nothing. Nothing. And I'm not, I can't expect it. I can't expect it. I can't expect any better customer service, any customer service at all, really. Um, but it, it is what it is. I just, I, I honestly feel that it's it's up to us as customers to uh drive this thing um and, and make sure that these people know that uh the word is out that they have some improvements that they need to make and, and on this particular gun especially the magazine have you watched the video on the magazine so these magazines are not are not precise. Um, the one that you get with the gun, I'll bet you money the one that you get with the gun is going to be right on. You'll be able to shoot slugs, you'll be able to shoot pellets, whatever the fuck you want. It's going to be the right size. There's a median size you want, right, for every caliber. Um, and, and what I found with this one, the original magazine I got with this gun, I could put uh, pellets in it and I could put slugs in it. I went as far as flying down to Phoenix and going down to Air Guns of Arizona, and they had a 30 cal sitting there because my neighbor wants to buy a 30 cal. They had a 30 cal sitting there, and the magazine in the 30 cal that was on the shelf would accommodate the pellets that uh, they had pellets. They had some H and or the, some uh, Diablo pellets or what the fuck ever, and I had actually two slugs in my pocket. And I took one slug and I put it right in. It went right in. This is the one they had on the shelf. The slug and the pellet fit perfectly. I asked the kid if they, he had a spare magazine in the back. And reluctantly, he goes in the back and he gets a spare mag and he hands me a spare mag. Guess what, Guess what happened when I tried to put the slug in? It wouldn't fit. Same situation. Four thousandths too tight on the spare magazines. Don't ask me. I don't know. I'm getting several different stories, and it all sounds like bullshit to me. So if you're going to buy a Western Sidewinder, and you are like me, and you know you're going to go through 100 rounds a minimum in a day, and you're not going to want to sit there and reload your single magazine time and time again, you're going to spend an extra 300 bucks, buy two spare magazines. When you get those spare magazines, make absolutely sure that you can fit slugs in them. Make absolutely sure that they're really, really close to what you got with the original gun. If not, make them get you the right shit. It's up to us, the customers, to drive this train. And we need to drive it right up their ass if they're not going to make it right. We pay a premium price for these products. And we need, well, first of all, premium customer service. Secondly, premium products i.e. the magazines so no we still got a still got a magazine issue so if you're going to buy a western sidewinder keep your eyes on those spare magazines 
Now, let me tell you the good, though. I, I'm not going to get away from telling you good, because that'd be bullshit. I'm not sponsored by anybody. People don't send me shit to try out. I'm just going to give you the lowdown. Just down and dirty, the hard truth. So, this gun. I bought it. Cheap piece of shit scope. Put it on here. Two rounds. I was at 60 yards, backing up to 100. Uh, put this guy on there. 100 yards. You know, um... Uh, sub one MOA doing great I uh, just nailing shit um, but of course gun broke send a gun back and, and that's after the whole fucking six week deal with the with the magazine finally got that ironed out and then the fucking gun broke I mean it was broke from the factory because the parkerization sunk down into the crack watch the video again alright so I take it take the gun apart and send it in the barrel was off the the tank stayed here the scope stayed here and the sling stayed here everything else got put in a little box and got shipped back finally got it back god that was another fucking six weeks who fuck knows oh forever forever and uh, they made it right they did make it right but jesus christ anyway i get the thing back i'm excited check it out and that's when i found the gouge down here um, everything else here looked good. I didn't get my crony out. I, I still got to put a crony on this, make sure my air, air valve's where I want it. Uh, but I don't think they touched my regulator at all because my dial back here on the back shows, uh, shows higher, high pressure the way I wanted it, the way I had it set up. So I, I put my scope on. I didn't take the scope off the rings. I just undid the, loosened up the, the brackets for the pick rail and, and set it on the shelf with the rest of the bullshit. Um, so I put it back together, put the scope back on here, and clamped it down on the pick rail, and then got it, put my cheek up to it, got an aspect. I was happy. I didn't, I don't know where it was, forward or back. Who knows? Don't care. I, I got a good aspect on it. I'm pulling the trigger. We're going to be happy to see what happens. Uh, so I took it out, and I 100% I expected to have to uh, zero this scope back in. Because I had taken it off and I put it back on. I figured it'd be off a little bit somewhere. That son of a bitch was dead on. It was dead on. So, yeah, the thing about the Western Sidewinder, it just fucking works. I, don't ask me how. The motherfucker's accurate. Now, don't get too crazy and take my word for it. Because to get a Sub-1 MOA on this gun, I had to take the barrel off and I had to polish the barrel. I got shit here. I got my barrel polish here. 3M rubbing compounds, what I used. And uh, uh, it takes it takes a good half hour, 45 minutes, you know, maybe an hour uh, after cleaning and, and everything. The good thing is you can take this barrel off in about two seconds. I mean, just a couple bolts and then unscrew the barrel. Now, they don't really tell you in the book or anything the, the exact tolerance back here because this barrel, when it threads in, it's loose. You can thread it all the way in. You'll never get your magazine in, of course. That's another thing. When um, when I got my magazine back from Precision Air Guns, the barrel had been threaded in, so there was no way my magazine could be popped in there. So I know they didn't test fire it. Now, I'm sorry, but if you have a customer that sends you a gun that's broke from the factory and you put a new lower breech block on the son of a bitch and you put the thing back together, I, it, don't tell me you're, you're sitting at Air Guns of Arizona. You don't tell me you got bottles sitting on the shelf. Screw a bottle into the fucking thing. Roll in a damn magazine and, and pop a, a round or two out of it to make sure the fucker works. They didn't do that. They did not do that because the barrel was back too far. When I went to put my magazine on, I'm like, uh oh, okay, hang on. And, and I've been through that before. I know there's a tolerance on that magazine. We don't know what it is. Uh, it, it's just a fucking however you feel. Probably, I would say, four thousandths, maybe eight thousandths uh, between the barrel and the, uh, and the magazine. That's going to be right back in here the barrel comes back. If you don't have these clamps tight, you can thread the barrel back far enough to where your magazine won't even roll in. Uh, but no, they didn't, when they fixed it, they didn't, they didn't test fire it. They couldn't have because 
the barrel was back far enough where the magazine wouldn't go in. What the fuck? That, that's what I'm talking about, my customer experience being just not so good. Not so good at all. But, uh, you know, I learned a lot through this experience. And uh, I, I learned that, that in the air gun world, you cannot really expect a, 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 a real solid customer experience you uh you kind of have to push for it and fight for it so you know this uh the customer experience issue and with the western sidewinder the magazine issue uh the tolerance issue on the magazines these have to be a customer driven these have to be customer driven issues so you know you're in the driver's seat you got the wheel do what you got to do you know uh there was a gentleman that commented saying, hold their feet to the fire. That's pretty much what you got to do, you know. And, and again, I'm still holding my gun in my hands that the clock is ticking on the one-year warranty. is now six-month warranty. I've got nothing in writing, but I've got everything documented. Everything is documented on this thing, being broke, the tolerance issues with the magazine, you know, and, and the shipping back and forth now that was all taken care of i got drop ship labels it was all taken care of still though still an issue because these tolerance issues with these magazines shouldn't exist you pay this kind of money for this thing and that 150 bucks a pop for the magazines you should not have a problem with tolerance issues with the magazines four thousands too tight and then jared sent me some that were four thousands too loose and that was even more dangerous. That you know, it, it's not dangerous if you can't fit a, a slug into your magazine. But if you put a slug in your magazine or even a pellet and it falls out the other side, stranger danger, buddy. You're asking for you're asking for trouble. You're gonna have lead flying everywhere. That's why we wear safety glasses. But uh, yeah, it's up to us as customers to handle these situations and to try to make this change. We've got to drive these issues. Because if we don't, they're going to keep getting over on people. And I don't want people just sending these things back. I don't want to... There was a guy that said he, he bought one. And I don't know what kind of issues he had. But he was not happy and he sent it back. Well, damn it. You should be happy with the product. I, I'm tickled with this product. I really am. I'm just not happy with the customer experience. And I'm not happy with the, the time that I've been without it. And, and that's warranty time ticking away, just in case something does happen. I mean, if a, you know, if an O-ring blows or something, I can take care of that. That's not a problem, right? I have resources, no big deal. But the, if that valve fails, uh, there's going to be issues. We're going to have trouble. And, and I don't want to have to buy a new fucking valve. I haven't even priced it yet, but I couldn't imagine it's going to be cheap. And it should be covered under warranty for a full year. That means me using it for a full year, not me using it for a month and then having to send the magazine and pin gauges and everything back to the rep to get the magazine tolerance issue fixed just so I can suit slugs and then wait, you know, a month and a half on that and then wait another two months because the fucking lower breech block was broken, which that was, I, I don't know, hopefully nobody else has that problem. Uh, I, I'm telling you right now, if I was you, I'd be taking that lower breech block off and checking that hole right there. You have to take the, the power valve, you have to take that out to inspect to make sure that there's no fracture there. But, uh, yeah, I would definitely, if I if I owned, if I was you and I owned a Western Sidewinder, I don't care what size it is. I don't care if it's a 30 caliber or a 22 or a 25, whatever it is. I, I would spend a, spend a half an hour, disassemble the thing and do an inspection on it because that's... That's pretty critical. And that's not tapered threads. That's not a pipe thread. That's a standard. It looks like a standard three-quarter inch thread or half inch, maybe five-eighths. I don't know. But that is a, like a standard thread. It is not a pipe thread. So you can't over-tighten it. It, it. it goes down against a flat surface with an O-ring on it. If it was pipe thread, you wouldn't have a, an O-ring there. Okay? So anyway, just be cautious. Um, I do love the product. But I can't at this point, I can't recommend it because of my customer service issues and the magazine issues and 
everything compounds. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, just have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe at the range. And throw some lead. All right? See ya.